Hello everybody, my name is Elliot Kimmel, I'm a high school science teacher and this is my video tutorial on enzymes and hormones of the digestive system. This is for grade 11 biology and in particular this is exam preparation for my students at Central but hopefully anybody else that's watching this will find it helpful. So uh, my students you should have the handouts that go along with the diagrams that I'm going to use and I do want to say that some that three of the diagrams anyhow are ones from the internet and I'm not making any money off this so they're used for educational purposes only and all the rest of this cool stuff I drew myself. All right now have a look at the first diagram there and get your pen or pencil out. Uh, we're going to highlight some of the organs of the digestive system and the glands and look at the secretions. So I'm going to come up here to the parotid gland. This is one of the three major salivary glands and we're going to highlight that one and indicate that amylase is produced and released here. All right, so that's one of the enzymes we're going to talk about. We're going to come down here to the stomach as well. We're going to highlight that. And you'll note that there are two major enzymes I want to talk about in the stomach. I want to talk about pepsin and I want to talk about lipase. Um, any of the other secretions from the gastric glands I'm not going to go into in this video. There's also the hormone gastrin released from the stomach and I will be talking about that as well. So hormones are circled and enzymes are boxed. Here's the pancreas and the pancreas has a number of secretions, uh, both enzymes and hormones. I'm only going to talk about pancreatic enzymes, not the hormones insulin and glucagon. So we've got trypsin, amylase, lipase and erepsin. So write those down on your handout as well. These are the ones we're going to cover from the pancreas. For the duodenum, we've got both uh, hormones and enzymes. We're going to talk about erepsin, maltase, sucrase, lactase. You'll note that erepsin is present from the duodenum, but also from the pancreas. All right, so that's not a mistake. Uh, both places have it. And the hormones secretin and CCK. And finally, we're going to look at the liver as well. Uh, we're going to look at bile, which is not exactly an enzyme. It's a digestive secretion that helps in the breakdown of fat. So... Uh, you should have all of this stuff labeled on the diagram. If you're running a little bit behind, then just pause the video, get this stuff down, and we'll move on. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how enzymes down here, let me activate that, how enzymes here um, are involved with uh, breaking down these macronutrients here. So we've got starch, all right, we've got protein, we've got lipid, and then I'm going to look at uh, some disaccharides as well, which really could go into the carbohydrate category. And then we're going to look at, um, also we're going to look at some hormones, gastrin, and secretin. All right, so let's move on. In this diagram, what I'm doing is I'm illustrating starch. This entire molecule would represent a starch molecule made of many glucose molecules in a row. Now, um, we've covered all of this stuff in class, and so I'm not necessarily expecting that you're going to draw this, but of course you're always welcome to do that if you think it's going to be helpful to you. So starch has glucoses. Here are all my glucoses. And of course there will be lots more coming along there and along there. And what we're going to do is we are going to go uh, see how starch gets broken down by the first enzyme, amylase. And we're going to assume that this is in the mouth, all right? So this is coming from the salivary glands. Starch being a polysaccharide will get broken down by amylase into maltose, which is a disaccharide. And then later on in the digestive tract, maltose will get broken down by the enzyme maltase into glucose. But I'm going to show you all of that here. So let's see how starch gets broken down by amylase at these spots. See, these are the spots where the enzyme is going to act. Okay, so amylase from the salivary glands digests starch into maltose in the oral cavity. Amylase from the pancreas also digests starch into maltose in the small intestine. So the pancreas releases amylase as well. I mentioned I'd be talking about the pancreas enzyme. So here's one, and this one functions in the small intestine, whereas the salivary amylase functions in the oral cavity. So we now have a disaccharide. Here, let me get that going again. All right, we've got three glucoses from our original starch molecule. Uh, maltose is a disaccharide made of two glucoses clicked together, bonded together right in that region there. So let's see how the enzyme maltase now converts maltose into glucose. 
there you go. We've got our individual glucose molecules now. And uh, that, of course, is a monosaccharide. And those glucose molecules are absorbed into the capillaries of the villi in the small intestine. So there we have the complete breakdown of starch all the way down to glucose. Of course, don't forget this maltase enzyme here, that doesn't exist in the mouth, that exists in the small intestine. So that's one of those small intestine in, um, enzymes that we saw in the first diagram. Let's move on to proteins now. Proteins are also polymers. That means they're made of many units, okay? And the units in this case are amino acids, and that's what AA stands for. So I've done, drawn a chain of amino acids of different colors. So here, protein, long chain of amino acids. And we'll need a number of enzymes to completely break this down. So here's pepsin, and it begins as pepsinogen, which is the inactive form coming from the stomach. Hydrochloric acid, also from the stomach, will convert pepsinogen into pepsin, and now the pepsin is the active, the active enzyme, whereas pepsinogen was the inactive enzyme. So that's going to work in the stomach, and it's going to break down your protein into peptides, which are shorter chains of amino acids, or polypeptides. Now, protein can also be broken down in the small intestine when trypsinogen, which comes from the pancreas, is converted to trypsin. Now, on the main sheet there at the beginning, I had trypsin as an enzyme uh, from the pancreas. It starts as this, and in the small intestine, a substance called enterokinase converts trypsinogen into trypsin, and now the trypsin will do the same thing that pepsin does. It'll break down protein into peptides. So let's have a look at what happens when peptides are now in the small intestine, and they're still shorter chains, and they need to be broken down. So let's look at this. All right, that's what pepsin or trypsin did. Pepsin in the stomach digests proteins into peptides. Trypsin from the pancreas acts in the small intestine where it also digests proteins into peptides. So these peptides are shorter chains of amino acids, and now the enzyme arepsin, which is in the small intestine, arepsin is gonna act right there and there, here and here, and it's gonna break these peptides into individual amino acids like this. So now we have individual amino acids, and these then are going to be absorbed into the capillaries of the villus, right there, all right? So we've got our individual amino acids, which are the smallest breakdown products that we could have, and we're ready to absorb them. So that went through from proteins all the way down through peptides, all the way down to amino acids. Now... Lipids can come as individual small molecules like this, where we have glycerol and three fatty acids. Now, that's called a triglyceride. Um, but in this case, I want to look at large clusters of lipids. So, for example, if you eat a piece of cheese or you got some butter on your sandwich and you get a big chunk of lipids... Well, there's an enzyme, the enzyme here, lipase. Lipase will tend to come in here and it will break down individual lipids. It will split the glycerol off and all of the fatty acids and you'll have all the different pieces. But lipase has trouble getting into a large cluster of lipids. And this is why we need the, en the enzyme or the substance bile. Bile comes from the gallbladder and we'll have a look at its release in a bit, and it emulsifies the large cluster, all right? So what it really means is it's going to take, and it's going to split right there where you see the arrows, and right here, and it's gonna break off the individual lipids like this, and then lipase down here is gonna be able to act better on this. So let's have a look at what bile does first of all. There you go. We now have individual lipids, and now each of these can be acted on by the enzyme lipase more effectively. Now, lipase is present in the stomach, all right? And you've seen that on the main diagram, but when lipase is in the stomach, it has to break down just those individual lipids here. All right, if there's a big cluster, it can't really do a good job in the stomach. So although lipase is present in the stomach, it's not gonna do a great job of lipid digestion if you've got a big cluster. 
when the the lipid goes into the small intestine though that's where bile is going to work and then lipase will come in as well now that that lipase that works in the small intestine comes from the pancreas so let's have a look at lipase action there you go all of the components of the triglyceride has been have been separated glycerol and the three fatty acids for each lipid now these substances uh, the glycerol and the fatty acids they're absorbed into the lacteal of the villus so that's a different spot than the carbohydrates the monosaccharides and the amino acids they're absorbed into the capillaries but uh, these components of fats are absorbed into the lacteal now i just want to focus on a couple of disaccharides because before we had starch a polysaccharide being converted to maltose so maltose is a disaccharide as these are also disaccharides um, so i want to look at sucrose which is made of the monosaccharide glucose and fructose click together and i want to look at lactose which is made of glucose again and galactose in grade 12 biology you'll have a look at the structures of these molecules they're all rings and that's why i drew them this way um, but for now we'll just deal with the names so on the left side we're going to deal with the enzyme sucrase sucrase is going to break down sucrose which is glucose and fructose it's going to act here in between the two monosaccharides and it's going to split them into the monosaccharides and this is happening in the small intestine same deal for lactose in the small intestine but the enzyme is called lactase it's going to break down lactose into its monosaccharides glucose and galactose so let's have a look there we go monosaccharides for everybody we've got our glucose we've got our fructose those are monosaccharides that came from sucrose we've got another glucose we've got a galactose and all of these are going to be absorbed into the villi capillaries all right so that's your disaccharides so we're done with the major enzymes that i wanted to focus on now we're going to have a look at the hormones now you have this diagram as well in your handout or it is available on the internet there's lots of pictures of the wall of the stomach and gastric glands here we're going to look at the hormone gastrin and i'm going to attempt to write on the screen here and i'm probably not going to be overly neat but what i want to suggest to you is that you write something similar to what i'm going to write so we're going to be looking at the hormone called gastrin now gastrin being a hormone is released when protein so i'm going to write the word protein protein is in the stomach lumen here all right so you got some protein there and we're not talking about individual amino acids chains of amino acids or proteins when protein is in the stomach it's going to interact with the stomach and cause the stomach to release the hormone gastrin so my suggestion is that you write this stuff on your handout gastrin then is going to travel through the bloodstream and is going to come back and it's going to go down to the gastric glands of the stomach all right so this is the hormone here gastrin and this hormone travels through the bloodstream to the gastric gland it causes the gastric gland then to release its secretions the gastric juice and in particular we're interested in what comes from the parietal cells and the chief cells we didn't study that in class exactly but this is where hcl so we've got hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen okay the pepsinogen of course will be converted into pepsin from the action of the hcl so we end up getting the active form of pepsin and that then comes right back and digests the protein so this is some kind of a cycle here with the hormone in the middle gastrin being produced due to the stimulus of protein in the stomach causing the release of the substances we need to digest that very protein have a look at this diagram which is one of the ones that i gave you as a handout and you can see the underside of the liver here's the liver up here underneath the liver we've got the gallbladder we've got the cystic duct that carries bile down the common bile duct and you'll note that this duct the bile duct comes down and empties its secretions into here now this is the small intestine 
underneath the stomach, which would be in this region here, you've got the pancreas. Now the pancreas releases a number of hormones and enzymes, and so this is what we want to talk about now. I want to talk about the release of secretin. Now, in your stomach, you have hydrochloric acid, all right, and it's used predominantly to activate pepsinogen to pepsin. And when the, the contents of the stomach enter the small intestine, you've got acid. Now, acid is drawn typically as H+. This is the ion, this is the part of the acid that gives it its acidity. So I'm going to show you a little bit of something over here. Oops, it's my little scratch pad. And what I'm gonna draw here is the chemical reaction to show the breakdown of hydrochloric acid this stuff splits into hydrogen ions that are positively charged and chloride ions. And this is the stuff that we are concerned about that causes the acidity. So, when the acid ends up in the duodenum, it's done its job in the stomach, and the duodenum needs to have a pH of something like nine, something like that. So this is too acidic. So we need to neutralize this acid. So what happens is the acid comes in, stimulates the wall of the small intestine to release a hormone, and the hormone is called secretin. Secretin then travels through the bloodstream over to the pancreas. And in the pancreas, it's going to cause the release of the chemical bicarbonate. Now, bicarbonate is not an enzyme. It's just a polyatomic ion made in the pancreas. That is going to travel through the pancreatic duct here into the duodenum, and it's going to go up, and it's going to neutralize that acid. So acid in the small intestine causing the release of the hormone secretin from the small intestine, traveling through the bloodstream to the pancreas, triggering the pancreas to release bicarbonate ions through the duct into the small intestine, and that is going to neutralize the acid. Let's come over here and have a look at a neutralization reaction. So what we have is hydrogen ions in the small intestine plus bicarbonate ions from the pancreas. I'm not much neater with this pen, am I? And that produces H2CO3. This is carbonic acid, and this stuff will then split into water and carbon dioxide. So we've gotten rid of that H plus by reacting it with bicarbonate, and we've produced something else that's not acidic anymore. So we've solved the problem that we needed to solve. The last hormone that I'd like to have a look at is CCK. And CCK is involved with breaking down lipids. It's involved with causing the release of bile. So when there are lipids in the small intestine, I'm gonna say L, and I'm talking about those clusters of lipids. So we got a whole bunch of L's here. That's a big cluster of lipid, right? We said earlier that we need bile to break them down. So when there's a cluster of lipids in the small intestine, they will cause the cells of the small intestine to release the hormone called CCK. CCK travels through the bloodstream up to the gallbladder, and it causes the gallbladder to release bile and it will then travel down the bile duct, all right, into the duodenum or small intestine, and it's going to encounter that cluster of lipids, and that's where it does the emulsification. It will chop these things apart and free the lipids. I didn't do that very nicely, all right. It'll free the lipids up, and now that those individual lipids are in the lumen of the small intestine, now the enzyme lipase from the pancreas can come out and effectively break down that lipid into glycerol and fatty acids. All right, so there's the review. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.